Hey, guess what? It's Monday night. Wait, you don't hear the music? No, the music's gone. Oh, okay. <laughs> Feeling that you're in a department store. I smell the pancake makeup and the jeanette and all the other stuff. Boy, did I just date myself. Anyway, uh, tonight on our show, we've got lots of really cool stuff along with a really cool guest. That's right. Melissa Motes will be joining mm-hmm. us from Las Vegas. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the voice actor studio, and she's got a great story and some cool tips for you guys, and we'll talk about that. You have a pile of tech news. You know, right before the show, I sit down and it just starts to flood in. So yes. a lot of pot, we're talking a lot about plugins tonight. So. Okay, cool. And stuff about Falcon Nine stuff. Oh, baby! All yes. right, all that coming up right here on Voice Over Body Shop. Two men. Twin sons from different mothers with a passion for voiceover recording technology and the desire to make recording easy for voice actors everywhere. Together in one place. George Whittem, the home studio engineer to the stars, a Virginia Tech grad with an unmatched knowledge of all the latest gear and technology in voiceover today. Dan Leonard, The home studio master, a voice actor with over 30 years experience in broadcasting and recording, and a no-holds-barred, myth-busting attitude for teaching you how easy it is. Together, to bring you all the latest technology, today's voiceover superstars, and leading the discussion on how to make the most of your voiceover business. This is VoiceOver Body Shop. VoiceOver Body Shop is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan Signature Products. Source Elements, remote connections made even easier. VO2GoGo.com, everything you need to be a successful voiceover artist. J. Michael Collins Demos, award-winning demo production. VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your voiceover website won't be a pain in the butt. And VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. And now, live from their super secret multimedia studio in Sherman Oaks, California, here are George Whittem and Dan Leonard. Good evening. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver Body Shop. Or VO BS. Wow, we got a crowd in here tonight. Woohoo! See, we love having a live audience. I know, it's so much more fun. It's, the energy always goes up when we have a right. live audience. So feel free to laugh and applaud and do all those things. <laughs> that... Especially okay. now. All right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, so, uh, we've got Melissa Motes with us tonight. That's right. And we got lots of tech stuff. We would love your tech questions. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you have a home studio tech voiceover mm-hmm. tech question, Throw it in the chat room, either in Facebook or on our website, and Jack Daniel, our social media czar, will be transferring those questions to us. And uh, so if you have, a, like, a, a problem or something you don't understand, ask, and we shall deliver. That's right. And you shall receive. And if you're watching the show live on the in the uh, website right now, you have to have a separate window open. We're having a little YouTube problem this week, but the stream is still on live on YouTube and on Facebook Live. So, All right. Well, we've got an adventure coming up this week because you and I have to fly to New York to go to Uncle Roy's barbecue. We somehow managed to get the same flight, even right? though I booked a, some time before And you. I'm in the seat right behind you. So oh, I'm going to be great. like lobbying jelly beans over the <laughs> uh, top of the seat there and see what happens. <laughs> Uh, or maybe yeah. we'll get the person next to you to change or, you yeah. Know. People love middle seat. Yeah. I had a great middle seat on the way down from Seattle last night. Yeah. I was sitting next to a gentleman, which they would dub as of size. Okay. I think that's the terminology. Fortunately, you weren't on Southwest? Or... No. So I was, <laughs> I was sitting like this the entire flight, literally like oh. this in the middle seat, leaning over to the left. Mm. And the guy on my left, fortunately, was not of size. Ah. So... Maybe in the end that would have worked out better because then it would have been symmetrically squished and I could have just sort of just relaxed. But no. <laughs> anyway, I just came back from visiting my uh, daughter up there and it was beautiful up there. A little bit of mountain biking, 
We did a perfect rainy day uh, exercise of roller skating at a roller rink, which they do still exist in small town USA. <laughs> yeah. They don't really hear anymore in LA, but it was, it was a blast. It I was really call great. Seattle small town well, USA. Well, we were outside. We were in okay. the burbs. All right. In the burbs. But it was, uh, it was a lot of fun. Beautiful, beautiful area. Yeah. Big place. Well, we don't have any news tonight, so we're going to do something a little different. Because there was news here in Southern there California definitely was last news. night. Not the news that maybe you guys were thinking of. Right. Tech news yeah. of a different sort. Right. For years, living up in Buffalo, I, I never got to see a rocket launch. You could see it, you know, you'd watch it on TV. Oh, look at yeah. there it goes. That's cool. Maybe the kid with an Estes rocket that he got for his birthday. Oh, I and I had tons of those. <laughs> That's about the best you're yeah. going to get. <laughs> There it goes. I did many of those as a yeah. kid growing up. Well, last night, our friends at uh, SpaceX, mm -hmm. they launch a lot from Vandenberg Air Force Base, which is pretty much due east or due west from here. Yeah, like if northwest, you, like, west, look straight northwest. that way. It's amazing to watch yeah. this, especially when they launch right after sunset. I'll tell you, man, Elon knows how to sell it. Yeah, I mean the guy launches it at the perfect time so that the sunlight over the horizon will light up. I mean, the guy... I, yeah, it's like I mean, you've probably already wow. seen this on the news. I never take the right picture, but Jacob, my son, is always like, "Okay, cool." It's like I've got my phone. And there you can see the the uh, the booster going wow. off is that all on like one direction, and then the that? second stage going off in another direction, yeah. and uh, oh. and then you'll start seeing these little swirls on there as the booster maneuvers is, whoa, whoa, and turns to come back to Earth and land oh 500 feet from the launch pad. I mean, this is science fiction stuff uh, from I hope this video is even 10, 10 years ago. This would have been considered oh, science fiction. Damn. Right. This technology to make this happen is right. mind-boggling. Yeah, now here's some more still pictures. But this is this took up the entire western sky last oh, night. Man. You can see the, the orange at the bottom where the stage separation took mm -hmm. place. And then, you know, the rocket going off and then the booster moving off to the side all this is happening in real time and it's like it doesn't look real <sighs> and i missed it because i was literally in an airplane at the time that this on the wrong happening. side of the plane apparently. actually what time was launch time 7 21 okay so this was before i left i was still yeah. waiting to take off so. yeah but yeah but, oh man it looked it like a comet it was it was and it just kept going and going and it's like that can't be real, but it, it was. See, now it all makes sense. The reason they had a very small launch window, apparently. Like right. a, they, they had to launch at that minute. The 721. Had to take And off. I realize why now is because if they didn't launch it at that minute, they would not have gotten the perfect light from the sun bouncing off, creating the amazing show that it created. And everybody and anyone looking west last night saw that yeah. and went, holy crap. And of course, my neighbor's like, what is that? Anybody is, that didn't is, know are we was being invaded? Out. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody so, that didn't know was totally freaked out. <laughs> so that was that was a lot of fun last night. You know, my wife's like, "Yeah, look at that." You know, and I'm, you know Jacob and I are like, "Wow!" I Maybe know. you could hear some of that on the video. And what's but... so funny is is totally coincidentally, I was yeah. having dinner with uh, a person I was mountain biking with and her husband. Yeah. And I said, "What do you do for a living?" And he's like, "Oh, I'm a I basically design engines for rockets over at Blue Origin." If you know Blue Origin, thing? no you... Blue Blue Origin is Jeff Bezos's oh, right. SpaceX. Ah. That's his comp. As a matter of fact, it's been around longer than SpaceX, I think. But uh, so I'm sitting there talking to him about what's it like to be on a rocket team creating engines for rockets for Blue Origin. Yeah. You know, and meanwhile, this that was it was pretty amazing. <laughs> all right. Well, that's all kind of high tech news, although it was very visual. What's yeah. up in tech news with uh, voiceover gear this week? Yeah, well, it just seems to be a plug-in centric time. I mainly because I was on my other podcast, the Pro Audio Suite. We had a just released an episode where we interviewed um, someone from Waves of the company that makes plugins. Mm -hmm. Apparently, they have over 150 different plugins now. Right. And Isotope, who we in Voiceover certainly talk about a lot, the makers of RX, the noise reduction plugins, and we had a great time discussing all things plugins. But in the process, I learned about a couple plugins that either I hadn't heard of before or didn't know how good they were becoming. And one of those that I heard about that I'd never actually tried before, let me get to my point in my, in my news notes here, um, is RX-7 now, or the new version of RX is called RX-7, now has a uh, the next generation of their D-Reverb plugin. And 
this is one of those things that as this tool improves the ability to fix the one thing that we always tell you you can't fix in post you will eventually be able to fix and that is bad acoustics this thing will allow you to take the reverberation out of a room yeah and increasingly it's getting better at removing early reflections what are early reflections that's the stuff that makes your booth sound boxy like you're in a tube or in a tube or the sound of your voice reflecting off the window that kind of thing that's early reflection they're getting closer to being able to remove those elements of the sound and clean it up in post that's going to put us out of business <laughs> well we'll see <laughs> We'll see. I know there's a, there's a lot of technology putting people out of business uh, that we're all preparing for, like truck drivers. Um, yeah, it's going to get interesting here, but anyway, it looks interesting. I have not got, I've got a demo of RX seven. I haven't gotten to put it through its paces, but as soon as I do, I'll let you guys know, but this is uh, what that plugin actually looks like. Not, not that guy. That's actually the guy, by the way, the guy sitting behind me is Mike Varela. That's the Don LaFontaine voiceover lab. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but um, no, the plugin uh, is right there, and it's 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 a very geeky plugin. I haven't had much of a chance to play with, it, but as soon as I have it dialed in, I'll start offering that as a service to help people get those set up. Next plugin that I've been kind of wetting my appetite to play with is Waves WNS, which is what they call a noise suppressor. So we're all used to the noise reduction things that are in Audacity and Audition, and, and they suck. <laughs> they, they, they're, they're varying de- degrees of usefulness. Right. And it's sometimes they, they, the problem with them is they introduce a lot of artifacts. Right. And they're also slow. They take a huge amount of re- resources to run them. Um, this tool from Waves called WNS is right there. And it is more of a real time tool. You can actually use it as an insert, for example, on a track in your multi track uh, audition mm-hmm. sessions or Logic or Reaper. Studio One, Pro Tools, any of those things, you can run this in real time and have it remove some of your background noise for you or suppress it, as they call it. Right. It's a very interesting tool. It takes some tuning to get it right, but once you get it dialed in, it works pretty well. So so the thing is, with noise reduction, I always say, always better, always better to, uh, to get the noise level physically down so you don't have to use this you always try i mean that's that's the basis but if it's i mean heck if you live next to an airport one move or two you know try something like this or you know if you're in chicago and you live next to the l i don't know how people can do that. or if you just live in any apartment building in anywhere right if you're in an apartment building you are going to have trouble with your noise floor you're going to be picking up vibration and ventilation system noise from everywhere in the building yeah. So, you, you you know, it's not something you can really soundproof around very easily. Even right. if you get an ISO booth, they tend to make they pick up some noise. So a tool like this could be useful. Another plug-in that um, I've gotten to use most recently with very good result is made by Isotope. It's called Nectar. Nectar 2 is the new one. Well, I'm always, toward, always talking about chains and racks and all these things. And there's a lot of software that makes those tools really easy to use twisted wave um, even audacity now has an effects chain function but some other softwares that are not quite as capable like soundforge audio studio still those tools they make you apply one processor at a time if you want to do a high pass filter that's one step if you want to do you know on and on and on but this one plugin is like a, a plugin that contains many modules within it so it is basically the one plug-in possibly to rule them all it's a it's a it's a a a rack all in one rack it it is exactly in fact um there's there's a put that up again would you quick uh, quickly sue i'll explain how that works it's a rack where you see you've got i'll put my hand more like that's pretty much that's not gonna work i'll just i'll just explain you'll see there's a row of plot there we go there's a row of processors here that you can use or not use and frankly when i set it up i'm not using it Half of them I'm not even using because they're not appropriate for voiceover. But you can drag them, change the order of them, and fine-tune them. And then make one preset called an XML file. And the beauty of that is that is cross-platform. So if somebody is using Audition or if they're using SoundForge Audio Studio, or it doesn't matter what they're using, if they have that plugin, 
I can create the same uh, a plugin preset for them. Send them an XML file. That's the preset, mm -hmm. and they have my settings. Wow! So it, it's it's a really sweet plugin, and um, I believe it's one ninety nine or two twenty nine. So that was my next. It's question. not crazy expensive. Like right. bang for the buck, it's a pretty high bang for the buck uh, plugin. Cheaper than a, a booth. It's cheaper. <laughs> it's cheaper than moving for some of you or dealing with some of the other noise. It does not have a de de noise function in it. Right. It has a noise gate, noise gate or okay. expander. Which and you've that's something. Got to know how to use. Specifically. I'm the master of the expander. I've really got the expander dialed. I think it does a really good job. Um, before we move on, I will also mention that my I'm still doing my sort of quasi real world long term review of my LG G7. Love the phone. It's fantastic. It does everything fast. It has amazing cameras, two 16 megapixel cameras. It shoots Ooh. raw files, so you can shoot camera raw. And it makes a DNG and a JPEG. I mean, it's amazing. This thing is awesome. I am using it on Project Fi, and that's Google's wire, uh, wireless service. Not as enamored with that so far. It's, I'll tell you, at least here in LA, Verizon still is the king of the mountain when it comes to wi wireless connectivity here. I get better phone call quality on Verizon. Um, it's just been a better experience over on Verizon in general. So not going to say go for the Project Fi yet. Also, if you're a massive data user, you can get an unlimited plan from Verizon that goes for about 25 gigabytes before it's unlimited and slowed down. And on this, it's about 15 gig. And yes, I have gone through 15 gig of data I'll bet in you two have. weeks. And now I'm being throttled. So I'm not too happy about that. But it's a it's a sweet phone though. If you're not an Apple person, um, I can highly recommend the the G7 if you like taking pictures and shooting video. It's fantastic. All right, lots of cool tech news, fun All stuff right. to talk about. We got more tech stuff, and if you've got a question for us, please throw it in the chat room right now. Mm -hmm. We'll be thrilled to answer your question. I know we have one or two questions there, and I'm going to demonstrate something that's really cool for you Adobe Audition users. Which reminds mm -hmm. me, we've got one of the developers from Adobe Audition coming up in a couple of weeks. With the best name ever, Duran Gleaves. Yes. <laughs> okay. All righty. Awesome. All right, we'll be right back with more stuff right here on VoiceOver Body Shop. Don't go away. Hey, guys, this is Tom, also known as the voice of SpongeBob SquarePants, and you want to fill your ear holes and your eye holes with Dan and George and the Audio Body Shop. Ah! Snails like it, too. How do you think about your voiceover career? Are you frustrated with your lack of success, wishing you had more auditions and bookings, and making more money? We all have thoughts like, I'm not good enough to be doing this professionally. I'm just faking it. I need to join the union as soon as I can. I'm too old to get booked. I can't get started until everything is perfect. I hate auditioning because I never book anything. Sound familiar? Well, if only you could change your mindset and get rid of these ridiculous rules. Well, VO2 GoGo's David H. Lawrence the 17th has just what you need. He's completed a 21-day journey with nearly 100 voiceover and on-camera talent, just like you, called Believe 2018. And he recorded every single session, because that's what David does. Meaning you can take this journey now at the pace you want and change things for the better. Get the success you deserve by destroying your limiting beliefs and replacing them with powerful, productive, enabling beliefs, and do so on your own schedule. Here is the link. Go get the 25 hours of video and audio and daily chat logs and more and begin your own journey. The link is vo2gogo.com forward slash believe. That's vo2gogo.com forward slash believe. It's ridiculously cheap, and it's ridiculously effective. Once again, vo2gogo.com forward slash believe. As a voice talent, you have to have a website. But what a hassle getting someone to do it for you. And when they finally do, they break or don't look right on mobile devices. They're not built for marketing and SEO. They're expensive. You have limited or no control. And it takes forever to get one built and go live. So what's the best way to get you online in no time? 
go to voiceactorwebsites.com. Like our name implies, voiceactorwebsites.com just does websites for voice actors. We believe in creating fast, mobile-friendly, responsive, highly functional designs that are easy to read and easy to use. You have full control. No need to hire someone every time you want to make a change. And our upfront pricing means you know exactly what your costs are ahead of time. You can get your voiceover website going for as little as $700. So if you want your voice actor website without the hassle of complexity and dealing with too many options, go to voiceactorwebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. And we're back here on VoiceOver Body Shop. Cripes, you know, in March, we will have been doing this show for eight years. <laughs> oh, man. That... Boggles my mind. Yes, it's quite amazing. Boggles my mind that it's October already, too. But anyway. We do it because you guys keep coming back and seem to enjoy what we do. So Absolutely. We do it. And what is it that we do do? What we do is we help you with your home voiceover studios. Because in 2018 and beyond, you're going to have to have a home voiceover studio. Or a personal studio. Or, or a whatever, personal pers- professional studio. Or a personal professional project studio. Do you like the alliteration? P, 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 I do. And you know how I love alliteration. <laughs> uh, so if you need help learning, fixing, setting up, recommendations, all that kind of stuff, if you know nothing or if you know enough to be dangerous, you can talk to George or I because the two of us, we're the guys that do this. We do it more than anybody else on the face of the earth. So you might as well come to us because we're going to give you the right answers. And if you want to talk to George, where do you go? You head over to georgethetech.com or georgethetech if you like those short geeky domains. And you can hire me by the hour, by the job, by the session. I can design studios, do those plug-in stacks people are always talking about. It's all over there. And Dan is also available over on his website, which is homevoiceoverstudio.com. And uh, there you'll see all the stuff that I do. And uh, I have a fun time teaching people by Zoom and uh, and going to your house and fiddling around in your closet and stuff like that. The remote technology is so awesome. People are always thinking, wait a minute, you're in L.A. and I'm in Chicago. You're not going to be able to help me. Uh Uh Uh-huh. But yes, we can. Uh Uh And we We can can help you quite physically show you how to do things like how to set up your microphone and all the things that go on with that. So check us both out, and either one, we're going to help you out. Also, if you, if you want to have a, a sample of your audio analyzed, we both do that. I've got my specimen collection cup. I have the sound check. And we'll be happy to take a listen to your audio, raw audio primarily, or you know, send us the stuff that you're doing going, you know, you're using too much of this mm-hmm. and too much of that. and uh, Too much paprika. Yeah, or a little too, not enough oregano. Yes. Yeah. It's one of those things. Anyhow. Tonight, I wanted to explain something. So now it's time for... Stretching the limits of webcasting technology. Voice Over Body Shop presents... DawView 2018! Our good friend of ours, Julio Infante. Oh, yeah. You I know, met him out down in Atlanta. In Atlanta, that's right. Super you know. nice. Guy. Yeah, and we'll see him in, in Vegas, too, for, cool. for WovoCon. Uh... He threw me, we were talking about how to divide up files on Twisted Wave, and he says, there's a way to do it on Adobe Audition. Sweet, And yes. it's just the way he sounds. Uh, and, uh, and, and here's how it works. He showed me this thing called range markers. Range markers, okay. All mm-hmm. right. So if you're, if you're in Adobe Audition, and, and you, wanna, you, you can put a marker in front of something, like, you know, there you hit the M key and you put yeah. a marker there. Yeah, I know how to make a marker. I know how to name a marker. Well, what but you, these are ranges. Yes. So, so what you do. They have start at an end. Right. You can right click on this and see where it says convert to range. Okay. Suddenly this marker becomes something you can stretch out. Uh-huh. And so if you're, if you're recording a bunch of stuff, so you, you know, you have to do three takes of something and sometimes yeah. I'll do like five or six takes of something. Yeah. And I want to pick the best three. Say if I'm doing it for one of my, you know, one of the companies that, you know, that I do network stuff for, and they want three distinct takes, what I'll do is I'll try this and I'll edit all of them and go, well, which three do I want? Well, you can go, all right, this one here, this one here, and there could be a bunch of other stuff on there, but it'll only export that which you want to export. 
So you process all your stuff, you do all your editing, and then you can name the markers over in the marker section over here. Mm -hmm. And once you name the marker, actually it's over on this side. It's different on my different computers. You can put them in it. That's the thing about Audition. You can move these windows all over right. the place. Yeah, here's the markers over here. Yeah. So you can change the name of the marker. Mm -hmm. And then, and so whatever that name is, what the file that's going to be the file be? name. So it's copy, paste, gotcha. change the number, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And then you go to file, mm -hmm. export. I'm sorry, file, export, audio within range markers. Got it. And what it will do is it will export them to wherever it is you export your audio to in whatever format you want. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. And so it's, so, it's a quasi-batch process thing where you can convert right. a whole bunch of files to MP3. Right. Or something. So instead of like copying, pasting, putting one here, and then doing it, it's just like, boom. So this would be good for obviously e-learning. Right. Uh, anything where you have to do a whole lot of files, different cues. Right. I think I've seen video of Anthony Mendez doing this. Right. On Instagram where he's doing these for Jane the Virgin. Right. He's and got he's got all these cues, right. and they are exactly the certain length. They say, this needs to be 3.3 seconds, whatever, right. and then he divides them all up. And he'll open a file, and there'll be hundreds of these little markers in one right. file. Right, so you are Adobe Auditionites out there, that's how you do that. Great, cool little thing. Other softwares can do similar things. We talked about Twisted Wave. I'm not sure. The markers work very differently, though, in multi-track systems, yeah. like in Pro Tools and, and Audacity. Those right. markers are not... Re regions oh, of mark audio right the markers and audacity is that those are region things well yeah they're, they're they're locked in time not to the wave right so when you edit if you don't edit backwards in audacity starting at the end and work backwards the markers get all out of whack right. so they work very differently in those softwares all righty well we got a couple of questions yeah and our first one was mailed in earlier this week from oh. steve hufford he says what's the future of skype Every time I download their latest version, my Skype crashes and another new account suddenly appears. An account I did not create. So far, I've been able to speak with a war I have been able to speak to a warm blooded not human. Been able to. Does it say not? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I've not been able to speak to a warm blooded human at their support center, if indeed it exists. <laughs> uh, and uh, should I walk away from Skype in favor of Zoom or is there another option? Well, at the bottom of the hour, you'll tell us about a much better option, I'm sure. Sure. And, well, yeah. We'll uh, mention Source Connect, of course. Yeah. But uh, yeah. Different yes. tool, though. Kind of a different different need than from right. what Skype's. Yeah. I, I'm still using Skype, reluctantly, but mm. I am using it. And I think it's because of momentum. Right. I have so many contacts in there. Right. I'm using it for so long. And, uh, and I still use it to initiate my business phone calls. Right. So for me, it's still has a specific role in what I do. Right. Whereas Zoom, it's the features of Zoom and Skype overlap a lot. Like they do a lot of the same thing. But Zoom, correct me if I'm wrong, but you don't really use Zoom to initiate a phone call. Right? No, it doesn't you, have a keypad. You start it up, you send an invite to somebody yeah. and they join the conference. It's different. You can still do phone patch type things. Right. And video chat and everything else, but it's not for initiating a call like a phone. That's what I still use Skype for personally. Right. But I agree. I mean, I don't know what they're doing over there at Microsoft. They're, they, they, they run Skype, and they keep each generation, it seems to get more convoluted, more integrated with other stuff that you don't want it to be working with, and less stable. And with the latest version, I think it's version 8, um, I've been trying to tell everybody to roll back to version 7. And if you go online, you can Google old versions of Skype, and you can find downloads for previous versions, uh, 7.6 or whatever it is, is the version I've been sticking with on Skype and finding it to be really reliable. Um, so that's another option for making phone calls is Google Hangouts. I believe that's still free for making landline calls. So if you're looking for ways to make an actual landline phone call, right. that's another way to do it. Yeah. And then, of course, there's always my favorite thing. All right, my phone patch is set up. Are you ready over there? Okay, let me hit the button. Yeah, yeah, if like, you don't mind voice yeah. acting with a phone yeah. to your head, there's always it, that. It can be done. I've done it many <laughs> times. Uh, okay, Natasha, who happens to be in the audience tonight. Oh, hey. She has a question. And it's interesting because what she's asking has been very prevalent amongst a lot of people. Mm. And that is, my Adobe Audition is glitching lately. Yeah, no, 
It certainly is. Uh, cutting out microseconds of audio randomly. Advice? Well. There's another software that isn't getting better with age. No, they're having lots of interesting glitches with that. 2018. Yeah. Right? Yeah. PC so they're, 2018? They're, yeah, they're fixing it. I mean, they're, you know, I had I was able what to What version have... are you on? Oh. The old one? The old Oh, how many, oh, how many old? They, they've done like twenty. Not versions. the online version. Six. Okay. CS six. Oh, okay. okay. My theory is out the window. Then you're screwed. Yeah, yeah. I would no. say yeah, it might. You might want to update, but um, yeah. I mean, the old version should work, but if it's glitching, it's usually a, that a sounds... digital mismatch or something along the. Or yeah, your hard that drive sounds like a keep... hard drive problem. Yeah, or me. your hard drive's not keeping up. So that may not actually be Adobe Audition, and it might not yeah. be cs6's fault it may not be like yeah if you're using a standard uh, how old is the computer approximately a year is it, it's a mac or windows does it have an ssd or a hard drive thank you does but, the computer but this is take, how we solve these does the computer issues. take uh, two minutes to boot up or about 10 seconds Okay, okay, so it has a hard, hard drive. drive. Yeah. So what you should do is immediately upgrade that computer to from a hard drive to what's called an SSD. A solid state drive. That is going to make the computer way faster, and all of these glitchy dropout issues are going to go away immediately. Because the reason why is a hard drive is the spinning magnetic disk that we've been using in computers for 25 years. And what happens is it has to, um, for it to write audio to the disk, it has to move this little, literally there's a moving part in there that moves around like a tone arm on a record player, except it moves like this, like really fast. And if the hard drive is too fragmented up, then what happens is it's trying to find where to write that audio and it occasionally can't get there fast enough and you get a skip. That's probably what's going on. If you switch to these flash drives, AKA SSDs, solid state, that's instantaneous. They don't glitch. Yeah. So it might be worth looking into that. It might cost you 200 bucks or so to do it, but it'll turn that computer into a, a rocket. It'll be much faster, and that should go away. And we all know how fast rockets go, if you were watching last night. <laughs> anyway, worth a shot. our guest, Melissa Motes, is coming up, and we're going to have a great conversation with her. And uh, so stay tuned for that. We'll be right back here on VoiceOver Body Shop, so do not go away. Yeah, hi, this is Carlos Ellis Rocky, the voice of Rocco, and you're watching Voice Over Body Shop. VOBS is still on? Seriously? This is the Latin lover narrator from Jane the Virgin, Anthony Mendez, and you're enjoying Dan and George on Voice Over Body Shop. Hey, everybody. I want to tell you about our great, lovely, wonderful, amazing high-tech sponsor, Source Connect. Or actually, Source Elements. They're the ones that create Source Connect and bring you Source Connect. This tool is amazing for connecting your studio to others around the world for doing voiceover work real-time. That means you connect to the studio. They record you. When the session's over, you say goodbye. You move on to the next job. It is awesome to get to work in that kind of environment. If you're familiar a little bit with ISDN, it's similar to that where the session's being recorded remotely and you hang up and you're done. It's, it's a beautiful thing. If you're being asked to, to explore using Source Connect or you're not getting opportunities to audition because they need Source Connect, it's not crazy as, as crazy as you might think to get into using Source Connect. You can get a 15-day free trial, 15-day free trial, and it doesn't cost you a dime to get started. Then if you decide you want to keep it, you don't even have to have a little USB iLock dongly thing anymore to use Source Connect standard. And if you like, you can then subscribe instead of buying it outright. You can subscribe and pay us a very reasonable monthly fee to keep your Source Connect connection going. So go give it a try. Tell them that we sent you. And uh, I hope you find it gets your booking rate up and you start working more with Source Connect. I will be right back here with Dan and Melissa right after this. Are you confused about how to set up and maintain a professional quality voiceover studio? No wonder. The information out there is mostly mythology. This is the best microphone to use. You have to have a preamp. You need a soundproof booth. 
This software is the best. Your audio must be broadcast quality. Consult with someone who knows the truth. Someone who's been there, in the trenches, doing voiceover for over 30 years. Someone with unparalleled experience with voiceover studios, who's worked with hundreds of voice actors and designed hundreds of personal studios. He knows how to teach and cares about your success. In one of the harshest environments known to voiceover, your home. Dan Leonard, the home studio master. Separate myth from fact and get a handle on your personal voiceover studio. Contact the Home Studio Master at homevoiceoverstudio.com. All right, our guest, Melissa Motes, is a seasoned voiceover actor with thousands of booking under her belt during her almost two-decade-long career. She's heard worldwide on everything from national television campaigns for household names like Best Western Hotels, Ashley Furniture, and Proactive. Documentaries for megastars Justin Timberlake and Drake and for promos for The Ellen Show and many other cable networks. She's spirited, passionate, passionate, and downright loves telling stories. Melissa and her husband, Troy, are also the founders of, and creators of the Voice Actor Studio in Las Vegas, Nevada, where Melissa and her talented team share, teach, and inspire up-and-coming talent to embark on their own voiceover journeys. Melissa drinks a whole lot of coffee to balance her full-time voiceover career, mentoring new talent, and also teaching voice acting at the University of Las Vegas. Go Rebs! All right, let's welcome to the show, to VoiceOver Body Shop for the first time here, Melissa Motes. There she is! Hey, welcome! Guys. So how are things in Las Vegas? Things are great! I just said it cooled off out here finally. We're out of the 100s. All so. right. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah. Now I'm allowed to come up and visit. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I remember we were we were there last year and it was 102 at midnight. And it was like I remember my yeah, my is, shoes were melting in the parking lot. It was it was really dry heat, yeah it's oh yeah exactly it's not not humid subtropical. Anyway, oh. uh, it's great having you on. Are you originally from Vegas or are you from other parts unknown? I am a Midwestern girl. I grew up in Illinois. All right. I grew up in the Chicago suburbs in a town called Montgomery, and I went to Oswego High School. So a uh, Midwestern girl at heart that after school, I went west. I headed west. And then did you just went straight to Vegas, or you went to Los Angeles, or what? Actually, right after school, I went to Florida and started working on cruise ships. And I was a cruise director, and I was oh. singing. I was fun. My, my big dream growing up was to be Julie McCoy on the love boat. So... <laughs> So I did that for a few years, and then I met my husband, Troy, actually while singing on a ship. So it really was the love boat. <laughs> and, uh, we, we were married in 99, and then we moved out to Las Vegas. So I've been out here for most of that time. I did spend two years in Los Angeles um, where uh, I, I tried to live in L.A., but it was, it was crazy over there. It's too, too intense for this Midwestern girl. So I came back to Vegas where it was a lot more calm. <laughs> Good city. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, it, it is calm. It's not quite as big, but it's, you know, it, right. it's exciting, it's but it's also very comfortable and nice and suburban. And It is. Like going to Trader Joe's is a piece of cake here, you know, right. as opposed to in L.A. You know, driving was insane over there. Yeah. But um, but I most of the time I've been out here for about 18 years. We've been in Vegas for most of it. Uh, great. So... What brought you to voiceover from social director on a cruise ship, which I'll bet was a lot of fun. It uh, was, you know, it was fun. It was, it was, it was a lot less glamorous than let's say I, I intended it for it to be. Right. <laughs> and, and answering really stupid questions like, do you generate your own electricity? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, we have people like Dan. <laughs> no, no, I didn't ask that. <laughs> you know, yeah. We have this big extension cord and we just drive yeah. it all the way. Exactly. Great. So how did you get into voiceover? I got into voiceover um, about 2000 when my husband and I moved out here. One day I received a catalog from the University of Las Vegas that had a 
intro, introduction to voiceover course. And it was something I was always really interested in growing up. I was obsessed with commercials. I used to always love to imitate commercials on TV. And it was definitely something that I was drawn to even as a kid. Um, so I took the, the introduction course at UNLV and definitely after the first class, I just knew that that was my next, my next big journey. That was what I wanted to do. Um, at the time I'd been singing here in Vegas and performing on the strip and stuff. And, you know, the shelf life on doing that, that kind of life, uh, you know, there's a time limit for that. Let's just say that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The hours don't, are, don't, aren't the greatest. What's that? The hours aren't the greatest. Your, no, your sleep is no. not something you get gets all messed up. No, I think many of my nights singing ended around 4 a.m. Oh, and geez. dealing with uh, all the people who were having fun, you know, living it up in Vegas, it was it was exhausting. But but I took that first voiceover class, and I just you know when you have a moment in your life where you know where your next step is, where you're headed. That's the way I felt when I took my first voice acting class. And uh, I just, being in Vegas, I was all in. So I gave it everything I had. And uh, just, I worked really hard at the craft for a couple of years. I found a really good mentor out here um, who was teaching at the time through UNLV. And I just, I was religious about going every week to voiceover class and getting on mic and getting that training and getting that feedback. And I just fell in love with it. So how long did it take you to really start booking work? Um, I would say from the time I, I cut my first demo, which was about a year and a half into my training, um, within about six months, I started, wait for it. I, see, I pulled this out to show you guys. I started to hustle mm -hmm. my tape. <laughs> hey, those, by the way, those are cool now. Yeah. If, you, yeah. if you go to like a... Go to a hip thrift stop and a shop in a cool part of town. You will see cassette tapes for sale. I'm not kidding. Yes. So I, you know, I got in my little Volkswagen Beetle and hustled my tape all around Las Vegas. There were a handful of production companies here. And, uh, you know, I wasn't shy being the cruise director that I was. Uh, I just kind of walked in and said, hey, here's my tape. I'd love to work with you. And I'd say within about a good six months to a year, of really getting my tape out there and mailing it uh, snail mail, you know, to production companies. I started working fairly steadily, um, but it was part time for a long time for probably a good year to two years. And then about two years in is when I really started to unplug from singing and performing and other means of income and being able to fully, you know, pursue voice acting full time. Yeah. I mean, it's one of those things. You can't quit your day job when you're starting so, out. No, you've, you've got to have something to, to, you've got to have the resources to survive because it, it does take time, but it took you two years. Plus you, you know, you're able to, you, you learned who was the people in town and, and you worked there. What other challenges did you face along the way? I think the biggest challenges I faced going in was just letting people know that I existed. Um, I think that's every voice actor struggle, even today. Um, and then just patience, you know, when you're a new voice actor, I think that it's easy to have your expectations a little bit out of line because you're eager, you're excited, you're motivated. Um, you want to, you know, you want to quit your day job. You want to do voice acting full time, but patience was a huge struggle. Um, because I get, when I get my mindset on something, I just, you know, I want to go for it. Um, but patience and then just learning um, how to market myself and how to really get my name out there and going back, you know, 15 plus years ago, that's kind of when things really started changing a little bit where you didn't have to have an agent you didn't have to go through the more, I call them like old school proper channels to get work. It was people were starting to talent were starting to market themselves directly to production companies a little bit, you know, that was, I was right on the cusp of that, that new school approach, if you would. Um, so that, I think those were a couple of my big struggles, patience and marketing and getting my name out there. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I can see that you do a lot of different stuff and some people just specialize in one thing. They do promo or they're doing imaging or they're doing, you know, just commercials or just e-learning. You seem to go across the, uh, the entire gamut of what, what's available out there. 
How did you find success in each one of those genres? What did you specifically uh, do? Well, I think I just built solid relationships with production companies and end clients and different ad agencies, et cetera, e-learning companies. Um, and I enjoy voiceover in general. I just, I love it so much. I'm so passionate about it. And pretty much any story anyone wants me to tell, um, I am so game for it. And I enjoy each genre. My favorite is commercial. That's where my main bread and butter is doing commercial voice acting. Um, second to that, I would say it's a combination of promo, um, various narration, a little bit of e-learning. Um, but I think it's just, for me, it's just been building really solid relationships with production companies and them, I let them decide what they think that I would be a great fit for that they're working on. And they send stuff to me to audition for or to, to give a, you know, give my take on. And if they think I'm a good fit for it, I'm a good fit for it and, and I enjoy it. So I love it all. <laughs> right. do, you, do you have a different approach to each one of those different genres? I mean, do you, how do you look at say e-learning or, or promo or, you know, what's, what's your method for working with each one of these? Are you able to change gears real fast or? Yeah. Well, I mean, there are definitely different techniques to different approaches of voice acting, but I think the, the main ingredient, the most important ingredient is I'm true to myself and I'm myself in each genre. So if I'm doing e-learning, it's me becoming, wearing my expert hat, if you would. So I'm reading voiceover um, you know, content where I'm teaching. So I'm going to approach it slowing down and, and basically instructing and giving the listener that opportunity to absorb and, and take it all in. Whereas when I'm doing commercial, there's a different energy to it. There's a different pace to it. Um, seems like everything's always overwritten. So I've learned that really fun skill of, you know, reading really fast and not sounding rushed. <laughs> How many voice actors hear that every day? But um, I think for me, it's each read, each genre, it's about believability and it's about authenticity and it's about being myself. So I bring myself to every piece of copy I read, no matter the genre. And um, that has served me well, thankfully. Well, and obviously, since you're, you're doing quite well there. Uh, if you're just joining us, our guest is Melissa Motes, who's in Las Vegas. Very successful voice actor doing all sorts of stuff. If you have a question for Melissa, aside from the millions of questions that I have accumulated today to ask her, uh, Throw it in the chat room, either in Facebook or in our regular chat room. Jack Daniel is there taking down every word that you guys say and throwing it our way so we can answer your questions. So do that right now, because in the next segment, you get to be the interviewer, which is kind of cool. Um, okay, so you're doing all this stuff, but then you tried something new with your husband and you started teaching. Tell us a little bit about uh, how you got the voice actor studio started with your, your husband, Troy. Yes, I get this question quite a bit out here in Vegas. And it's so funny because I did not sit down and write out some kind of a business plan to become a voiceover mentor, voiceover coach, all this good stuff out here that I'm doing. Um, it started in about 2009, 2010. Um, people were just calling me and saying, hey, I hear you're a voiceover person or you do voice stuff and how do I get involved? And so I spent a lot of time on the phone just answering questions and trying to be helpful and giving people tips and stuff like that. And one day my husband said, hey honey, you know, like it's really nice of you to spend so much time talking to people and giving them tips and stuff, but maybe you ought to just be more efficient and get all these people together and just invite them over to do a little workshop or something here at the home studio. And I was like, yeah, that makes sense. That's a good idea. So pretty much I rounded up all these fine folks that I'd been spending time on the phone with. And we just did a little Saturday morning uh, Q and A at my home studio in Henderson. And everyone had a blast. We ended up reading some copy and I really had no plan. And it went so well that everyone said, Hey, Melissa, uh, is it cool if we come back next Saturday and we do this again? And so people just kind of kept showing up every Saturday at my house. And then it got to the point where one Saturday, I think we had 36 people show up 
um, for a little voiceover gathering. And by this time, this was like maybe a month or even a year in, none of the original people were really there. These were all people I'd, I'd never met. They were not friends of friends or <laughs> people I started with. I literally had like 36 strangers in my home. And uh, we realized that day that we either were going to continue doing this and do it on a different scale, or we weren't gonna be able to do it anymore. And that really bummed me out. So we figured out a way and we decided to open up the voice actor studio. And that's how, that's how it was born. Hmm. Okay. So what, what does it take to start a studio like that? What did you have to go through? Oh my gosh. It's, it was a lot of work. So, I'm sure. <laughs> and you know, we took a chance, we took a risk because we didn't know of any real brick and mortar, uh, voice acting school, if you would, um, especially not out, out our way, um, that taught voice acting, the craft, the technology, the home studio, um, the business and marketing and all that stuff. So my husband has really been Superman throughout all of this. Um, we've been together for 20 years and uh, he is pretty much the backbone of bringing all of this together. Um, he did all of the logistics to, you know, build the space out for us. And then, um, you know, we put a lot of trust in the fact that people were going to want to come and, and study with us. And uh, they showed up. There's a ton of talent out here. Um, but building the actual studio out, I have to give full credit to my husband. It was completely his vision. And um, it's been a work in progress for the last, we're going on four years now. We had our Henderson location for three years. And then we decided to move the studio to be more centrally located in Las Vegas. So we opened up, uh, we call it lovingly TVAS 2.0 here in Las Vegas. Um, we're like five minutes west of the strip now. So now we're, we're more accessible for everyone throughout Vegas. Yeah. So it was just the biggest undertaking, planning the workshops, planning, building a website, um, you know, putting all the nuts and bolts together. And let's just say I've learned a ton in the last four years about uh, running a studio and mentoring a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the, and the community, the voiceover community in Vegas is a great bunch of people because we, oh, we know a awesome. lot of people out there. Uh, and, and, and I think your, your studio has actually had a whole lot to do with that, with getting a lot of people involved in the business, getting them together. And it's important in any town where you are to, have a meetup group or something along those lines and work with other voice actors. So it's great that you did that there. And now it's provided a whole business opportunity for you and a great way to teach people. So that that's really cool. Yeah. How's the, how has the, uh, the move from where you were before to where you are now affected the, the business you're running? Has it been in a positive impact? It has been a positive impact. Uh, we had some people who were driving well over an hour to come to Henderson, uh, you know, each direction. I know for people who live in LA, they're probably like an hour, huh, you know, <laughs> that's quick. But out here, um, yeah, it's been really positive. So many people have thanked me, except all my Henderson people. They're like, thanks a lot, Melissa. Now we have to drive, you know, 25 minutes. And I'm like, hey man, I'm taking one for the team too. I'm driving from Henderson too. Right. But, it, it, it's just it's just better for everybody um, being more central for sure. Mm -hmm. And you guys are in close, uh, really close proximity to a really well known studio in town. Um, Adrenaline has your yep. close proximity to Adrenaline Studios been any yeah. way a direct benefit? How did how does that relationship between your two businesses is is there one? Yeah, well, actually, it's kind of a fun story. Matt Smith, who owns Adrenaline Studios. He and I go way back. We've been really good friends for a lot of years. And um, when I first started voice acting, when I hustled my tape, the one I just held up, to um, one of the local studios in town, at the time, it used to be Studio Center was the one of the studios in town here. And they're no longer here in Vegas, but Matt Smith um, moved in, Adrenaline moved into that, that old facility, and he completely revamped it, and it just turned out just gorgeous. I mean, the facelift that he gave um, the studio center side of, of the studio. And they had a, a separate entrance in the back, this suite that basically was being used as a, like a storage closet, if you would, for, for adrenaline. And Matt knew that I was looking for a space 
to basically move the voice actor studio more central to Las Vegas. And he reached out to me and he just said, hey, I don't know if this is enough room for you. I don't know if this would even work. But I went and took a look at the room and my husband and I walk in. And if you can imagine, it was just 1997 at a dark emerald green carpet, pink blinds. I mean, this place had not been touched since probably 97. And my husband's like, I have the vision. I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to rip everything out and gut this place and just make this amazing thing. And I was like, thank God you have the vision because I don't see it. But um, we ended up working it out with Matt because it was space he wasn't using. So we have our own little backdoor entrance, but we share the same roof as Adrenaline. So it's so fun. And the irony for me, talk about things coming full circle in my story. Um, the very first building that, that I ever had my first paid voiceover booking in was this very building that now the oh. voice actor studio 2.0 is in. So it's, it's sentimental for me. You know, it means a lot to me. It but must be cool when you have a student, maybe it started with you. I mean, maybe this hasn't happened yet, but well, eventually yeah. happens. You'll have students that are working with you out of your facility. And then someday they get to walk around the building right. and go in the front door and start working. Right. Is that already yeah. happening? Of course. Yeah. A lot of my students who've been studying with me for like six months to a year, um, you know, they get to their point where they're ready to cut a demo and they're ready to start auditioning and stuff. And Matt, he said to me, hey, you've got some great talent. I, you know, I'd love to hear your students as, you know, they evolve and he's super awesome about it. And so, of course, I'm always like knocking on his door and I'm like, hey, I've got somebody really awesome for you to hear. And so, of course, I'm happy to, you know, introduce my students to Adrenaline. And then there's also uh, Dog and Pony Studios in town, John yeah. McLean. Um, he's always really supportive of hearing a lot of new local talent. And so same thing. He's like, send him over. So uh, it's awesome. You know, we're a really tight knit community here and everybody likes to see you know, each other thrive for sure. Absolutely. Once again, we're talking with Melissa Motes, who has the voice actor studio in Las Vegas. You got a question for her. I'm sure you do. There's probably lots of cool stuff that she can probably give you some tips on because she's been there. She's done it. She's been in the trenches, dug her way out of them. And so, and look how clean she is after doing that. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> so toss those into the chat room. We'll get to that. Uh, what do you teach there? I mean, you, it's not a recording studio so much as it is a teaching facility. What do you teach there? We teach everything. So that's one of the things that was a huge struggle for me when I started out on my voiceover journey. I was taught the craft and I, you know, put all of my time and attention into basically, you know, mastering quote unquote, I use that loosely, you know, as much as I could with voice acting, but I didn't have anyone who really guided me on the business and marketing side of things or the technology that was such a huge, scary undertaking, learning about home studios and self-recording and, you know, all of the things. I mean, you guys give so much great advice on that, um, but we teach everything. We have everything from social media classes to learning quick books or learning fresh books. Uh, I teach a pretty awesome class on rate quoting and billing. I think that's a real scary part of the business for up and coming talent is knowing what to charge and knowing, you know, how to have those kind of conversations with people who want to hire you. Um, so literally every aspect of our career, um, I really pride myself on giving my students a very well-rounded experience so that they feel really, um, solid when they get out there and start auditioning they feel like they have us there as backup they can ask us anything if they they get stuck on quoting something or if they have a home studio issue um, we cover it all we've got um, ongoing classes every week so people can come in and get on mic and get feedback from our coaches we also have I call them my specialty workshops. It's like an a la carte menu. So we have a ton of special guests who come in. We just had Dave Finoy out who did a two day interactive um, uh, video game and interactive media uh, workshop that he led. But I bring in people from all over the place. I'm gonna get you guys out here. It's gonna be Yay. awesome. Yay. Yay. <laughs> you guys on the road. <laughs> Viva Las Vegas. So there's a video of us doing that over on, what is that, Fremont Street? Yeah. Yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> Can't 
can't I wait to do it. I call it Viva Las Voiceover. Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 And, we, and, we, and we've got uh, WovoCon coming up where our theme is Viva Los Wovos. Yes. That Wovos. Is right. I'm looking forward to seeing everybody. A lot to... of great teams are coming to town, so it's going to be fun. All righty. One of the things that's really important to you, and again, if you've got a question for Melissa, please, now's a great time to ask it uh, in our chat room. One of the things that's really important to you that, that you know, George and I understand a lot, and that's giving back. To the community you've had your success what is it that drives you to give back what is what is your philosophy on that i just think it's the right thing to do um i remember when i was a brand new talent and there were so many unanswered questions and um it was hard to find the answers to everything that i wanted to know and believe me there were many people along the way i've had some fantastic mentors and dear friends who any question that i asked them they were happy to answer but I had to do a lot of trial and error. I had to stumble and fall a lot and make a lot of mistakes to figure things out. And I just, it feels good to help people streamline that process. And I just, I feel like I know the questions that they have floating around in their head and all of those, um, the questions they have and the questions they don't know to ask, if you would. Um, and it makes me feel good to see people become successful and um, we all have dreams, we all have goals, we all have things we want to do. And I just, I really enjoy watching people succeed. It's, it's just one of my favorite things in life. I, I love voice acting and I also love teaching voice acting. I, I don't know what I love more. Uh, I kind of am crazy like that. I can't get enough of it. <laughs> yeah. Well, te teaching is a great, is a great fun thing, especially when someone comes to you years later maybe six months later, two years later, five years later, and says, thank you so much for teaching that class. That one tip you gave me was something that really made a difference, not only in my career, but in my life. Yes. And I used to teach social studies. They all hated me. <laughs> so. Social studies. Ah, that was not my favorite subject. It was <laughs> nobody's favorite what subject. What grade? Seventh grade? Eleventh grade. Oh, I taught boy. U.S. history and constitution. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Anyway. No, like that it's it is really special so many people have said to me like the studios changed their life you know um and not only just with their voiceover career but it feels good to give the voiceover community in las vegas a home i love for everybody to feel like they have their place to come where they're understood because it's hard for you know when you're when you have people in your household your family your friends it's hard for other people to really understand what our day-to-day -day life looks like or what our struggles are. So it's like, we're like cheers, you know, we're the place where everybody knows your name. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. we like, we're just there for you, you know, it's, it's, it's such an isolating business. And so um, it just feels good. It's the right thing to do. And I love to pay it forward. Yeah. Or as I like to say, home isn't where you live. It's where they understand you. That's correct. <laughs> I agree. All righty. Yeah. All right. Melissa Motes is our guest, and we've got your questions coming up and lots more here on VoiceOver Body Shop. So stay where you are. We'll be right back. Skittles, taste the rainbow. She has fought for those who don't have a voice. The National Zoo. <laughs> because sometimes you just need to stroke a llama. Instagram. Download it and start embarrassing your teenagers today. Resolve spot and stain. Because the dog's gonna drag his butt on the carpet. He just is. $400 million. That's what the mayor wants you to pay for a new basketball stadium. Chickens were made to be fried. Sorry, buddy. KFC. Engage the droid army with this Lego Star Wars Republic fighter tank. <laughs> what? You've never seen a girl kill a troll? GameStop. Hey, I'm the cat meme guy. Come on, you know you love cat memes. Instagram, what's your thing? Hi, it's J. Michael Collins, and these are just a few examples of the first-class demos my team and I are producing. If you'd like to have something similar, visit jmcvoiceover.com and click on the Demo Production tab to find out more. So I was talking to our good friend Harlan Hogan this morning. Yes. And he related a story to me. He said that he was recording in his studio... And his wife needed to take a shower, mm -hmm. as we all do, you know, I, whether once a week, whether I need it or not. And uh, but she noticed that his sign, the uh, 
LED voiceover sign was red. Let me get the red on there. Come on, where's red? And red means. Red means. There we go. No. Red means. Here, hold it up like right here. On the white background? On the, no, on the dark background. There you go. Red means I'm recording. Now, the problem is, is that their shower is right above his studio. She saw the red light was on and she knew not to take a shower and waited until the light changed probably to green. And, oh, look at that. It Which changed to green. Transparent. On our, yes. Yeah, on put, our... it, put it up a little higher. Yeah, well, that's interesting. All right, let's go to another color here. There we go. How's that? Okay. Anyway, this is a very valuable piece of equipment because it will save your relationships. As we all know in the voiceover business, your partner, spouse, or whoever else is living there also has to deal with the fact that you're recording in your home voiceover studio slash professional personal studio, whatever it is we want to call it. This is the answer to that, is to have one of these hanging just outside your studio where you can change the color and have different codes and stuff like that, you know, or you can have, you can change. So it's like changing all the time and That's you can party night. It, yeah, exactly. It's a, it's a disco sign. So uh, one of the, it's, look at that. It even does that just by using this little credit card sized remote that it comes with. You can change the, 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 the colors, the mode that it's in. You can slow it down. You can speed it up. There we go. How's that? Uh, speed it up just a little bit. There All we of a sudden, I went Thai food. I don't know why. Yeah. Anyway, the LED voiceover studio sign is available at voiceoveressentials.com. That's the only place you can get this. They don't have this anywhere else. Only Harlan has these custom-made for you, the wonderful people in the voiceover community. And the way you get there and see how wonderful this thing is, is you go to his website, voiceoveressentials.com. The easiest way is if you're on our webpage, go to the bottom of the webpage, way down there. Do you see him? Right down there is Harlan Hogan, and he's talking into his Porta Booth Pro. You click on that link. It'll take you right to Voiceover Essentials. Look for the LED voiceover sign, and you can have one, too. Have two. Give him perhaps a spouse is watching right now, along with one of our voice actor p friends watching voiceover body shop. They know the value of something like that, as opposed to just putting a tie on the door, <laughs> you know, or a sock or something else. This works much better. Go get one of these signs from Harlan Hogan at voiceoveressentials.com. It will save your relationships. Thanks for being our sponsor, Harlan. We love you. We'll be right back. This is Bill Ratner, and you're enjoying Voice Over Body Shop with Dan Leonard and George Whittem, VOBS.TV. And we're back with Melissa Motes, who's joining us from Las Vegas. Hi there. Hey, guys. <laughs> All righty. Great to have you with us. Well, we've got a pile of questions from our voluminous audience who watch the show live out in the four corners of the globe or, oh. or whatever. Corners of the globe. Yeah, that the makes four sense. corners of the globe, <laughs> across the seven seas. Who coined that phrase that anyway? Wasn't, it was not I. <laughs> That's right. Being I taught geography, that is definitely not something that I would use. Actually, I did, but just to get attention. Anyway, we've got questions from our great audience, Mr. Whittem. May you do the honors. Sure. Starting with one from right here in the room, Wendy Shapiro asks, "What do you find was the best approach?" When reaching out to the ad agents, lots of follow-ups, um, taking them out to lunch. What, uh, what, what was the thing that seemed to work for you or things? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I think the thing that worked best for me and continues to work well is um, making it more about them and becoming a solution, presenting myself as a solution for them and letting them know that uh, I care about their needs and I think when voice actors oftentimes solicit themselves, they they write really lengthy emails and they put a lot of fluff in and they think that they need to say a lot. And I think keeping emails, if you're doing it via email, um, doing it, keeping it brief, maybe three or four sentences and making it more about them and doing research on them and what their needs are and addressing them when you write them an email, uh, if you're doing a cold call and just I think frame it in the light that you are wanting to become a solution for them 
and um, keep it simple, keep it short. Mm. It's been very effective for me. Short so, and sweet. Absolutely. Yeah. And now it's time for our weekly Jack Attack, 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 Attack. Should we have him stand up in one of the mics over there? Yeah, we, that can that yeah we can do that. All right. I'm not sure which one's the live the mic, mic in there. I have to find my question again. Okay. Oh, okay. We got you. Jeff. I'll read it to you. How's that sound? Okay. Are we are we good? We're yeah, good. we got All right. you, buddy. Hi, Melissa. Hi. So, uh, when starting promo for a new show, or even over different seasons within a show, what are your steps for finding the right tone outside of the direction you do receive? Uh, I think for me, a lot of it's just trusting your gut. Um, I, being familiar with, you're talking about promo for... Yeah, mostly uh, promo, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think familiarizing yourself with the content and, and that particular cable network, but trust it, trust your gut, trust your gut on what the, what the copy is saying. Um, I think a lot of times we overthink stuff and I think our instincts truly guide us. And if we listen more to our instincts, as opposed to all of the obsessing and overthinking that happens in a creative's mind, um, usually the first read or two that comes out is the right one. <laughs> I love that answer. That's a great answer. Um, and I have a follow-up question. Sure. Uh, how has Booth directing others affected your reads? And I'll take my answer on the couch. <laughs> I love it. I think Booth directing other people um, has definitely made me a stronger voice actor. Um, I think that when you are directing others, you are paying attention to not only all the basic you know, fundamentals and foundation of, of the craft. Um, but I think that all the different nuances and all of the other decisions that other people make um, can definitely help you shape your ear and help your ear grow. Um, so that when you're looking at copy, it, it opens up your, um, your ability to interpret. That helps. I love directing other people. I learn a ton from other people's creative process. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. That's always fun to direct. You know, it's like you, sometimes you're like, ah, I'm, I'm not that great a voice actor, but somehow you listen to other people and you're like, wait, do it like this. And you get to mold the sound and it's really cool. Yeah, it's funny when you're playing someone else's instrument, how things are clearer to you than when you're doing it yourself. It's like uh, I always say to my students, there's not enough room for a creative and a critic in the booth at the same time. So make sure you leave your critic outside of the booth and let your creative inside the booth. Ooh. So Ooh. that's your that's your sandbox. So Golden you know. nugget. Golden nugget Golden alert. Ding. All right. Yay. All right. We've got we have a more another someone else from our studio audience. Natasha has a question. You're on. Thanks, Dan. Hi, Melissa. So great to see you. I, I'm, a, I'm under the impression that you get a lot of work out of L.A. I'm wondering um, how much you get out of L.A. versus the rest of the country and globally. I get a little bit of my work from Los Angeles. Um, I would say, actually, surprisingly, I get a lot of work from my Midwest agencies and production companies that I have direct relationships with. I am repped with CESD in L.A. It's a new relationship for me. Um, I just actually had my first booking with them. I was super excited. It was for the Ellen show. Um, but I surprisingly don't get a ton of my work from the LA market. I think there's so much saturation of talent in uh, Los Angeles that I put my effort um, elsewhere. I put my effort in other um, regions of the country. Um, I, I definitely pursue work in LA, but that's not where I get the majority of it. All righty. Another member of our audience. we got a crowd in here tonight. And you could be here, too, but we'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, Emily has a question. You're on. Hi there, Melissa. I wanted to know, are you going to be having any classes at your studio the day or two before WovoCon in November? Because I'm going to be there in Vegas, and I really want to go to your studio. Oh, that would be so awesome. I'd love to have you. Yeah. Um, I'd have to actually look at my schedule and see what the heck's going on that week. We have about 28 different workshops happening um, per month at our work at our at our studio. Um, Wednesday nights we always have like a an ongoing open mic night. If you check our schedule on thevoiceactorstudio.com, you can get 
the specific details, but every Wednesday night, um, we do have an ongoing on mic um, workshop that you can drop into if that's something that interests you to get some feedback. Thank you. All righty. Love to have you. Thanks. All right. Devox gets the last question, Mr. Whittem. All right. Over on the tab where those questions are. There it is right there. Oh, and over it is over here, too. Yeah. I got so many screens to look at. I'm going to stick with the one that I'm looking at now. Devox says, uh, what are one or two exercises or tips as examples you would teach an advanced student? Somebody who's already working. So do you have, I mean, you just dropped a good one just a minute ago, but do you have something else that comes to mind in terms of something you would give somebody who's already been in it for a while and looking to take a, get a leg up? Yeah, um, one of the things that I do a lot when I'm auditioning at home um, is I like to read, I like to go in and do anywhere from two to five auditions at a time. That's my personal process. And I'll go in and I like to always cold read my audition. So the first time I read an audition, I have not reviewed it. I have not um, given myself a chance to overthink it or overwork it in any way. So what I like to do is go in, um, I read off my iPad, I'll read my audition two or three times, then I go to the next audition two or three times, next audition two or three times, and then I actually circle back, then I read the specs, and then I do each audition again two or three times. We all struggle um, oftentimes with coming up with an A and a B take, for an audition. Um, so I like to read the script before I read the specs or the direction. And then I like to, like I said, go through the process of reading it only up to three times per audition um, for, for a one given you know round, if you would, move right on to the next script, same process, and then circle back, read the specs and do it again. And then what I find is I um, definitely have you know some really nice different nuances, different approaches, different mindsets coming in um, to my performances. And uh, I just feel like sometimes there's a lot of magic that happens in the very first read before I've had a chance to even process too much of it. I hope that's a helpful tip for you. Works for me. All righty. Well, Melissa, it has been such a pleasure having you on. Can't wait to see you in uh, a month when we're down in yeah. Vegas for, for RoboCon and, uh, we can continue this conversation, but amongst ourselves. Yeah, private, private conversation in Las Vegas. What yeah. happens stays here, as you know. Absolutely. <laughs> so how can one contact you if they have further question for you? Yeah, well, if anyone wants to reach out about the Voice Actor Studio or any of our workshops, you can drop us a line at info at thevoiceactorstudio.com. Um, or you can write me directly through Super VO Girl at Yahoo. I'm still a Yahoo person. I'm not a Gmail person yet. I haven't grown up. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not so, a bad idea. Yeah, learn to speak with a Russian accent if you use that. <laughs> <laughs> so it, you drop me a line anywhere. I'd I always welcome everyone with open arms. We get a lot of people from across the country who come to Vegas to have some fun, and they pop into a workshop or they want to come see our studio. We always love it. We love visitors. We'd love to see you. Right. So all your classes are in the studio. You're not doing any remote stuff. Um, right now, everything's in the studio. One of the things I haven't even shared with our local talent, I was kind of excited to share tonight, is coming up in the beginning of 2019, we're going to be rolling out some online tools and some of our stuff will be streaming. So we're going to get a chance to, to meet our people across the country who write to us and say, I want to learn from you guys, you know? So it's, Excellent. it's, time. it's time. We're getting ready to do that in 2019. Yeah. Nothing too streaming. Easy as pie. Piece of cake. Yeah, Absolutely. Can teach me some pointers on, on all that. Absolutely. Well, Melissa, thanks for being with us. Always a pleasure, and uh, we'll see you soon. Thanks, you guys. It's awesome to be here. All righty. Well, George and I have more stuff to say because we got lots of exciting stuff coming up, so stay tuned. We'll be right back. 
Your dynamic voiceover career requires extra resources to keep moving ahead. Now there's one place where you can explore everything the voiceover industry has to offer. That place is voiceoverextra.com. Whether you're just exploring a voiceover career or a seasoned veteran ready to reach that next professional level, stay in touch with market trends, coaching, products and services while avoiding scams and other pitfalls. Voiceover Extra has hundreds of articles, free resources and training that will save you time and help you succeed. Learn from the most respected talents, coaches and industry insiders when you join the online sessions bringing you the most current information on topics like audiobooks, auditioning, casting, home studio setup and equipment, marketing, performance techniques and much more. It's time to hit your one-stop daily resource for voiceover success. Sign up for a free subscription to newsletters and reports and get 14 bonus reports on how to ace the voiceover audition. It's all here at voiceoverextra.com. That's voiceoverxtra.com. And we're back to say goodbye, but we still got a lot of stuff to talk about before we say goodbye. Plug, like, plug, 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 exactly. <laughs> First on, who's on next week? Nobody, because we won't be here. We have to go to New York to be with Uncle Roy and all the East Coasters that we don't get to spend enough time we, with. We, meaning all of us. Even Sue is going to be unavailable next week. Right. So, so we're just totally shutting the doors. Right. I mean, we could try and do it on, you know, on our iPhone. Hi, it's my... No, you it can be work. sure there'll be some Facebook Live action going on. Right. In fact, I'm going to be there, and sure Dan's going to help out, too, getting uh, Uncle Roy's party streamed. Yes. That's part of what I'm... I'm earning a night in his VO B&B, or whatever he calls it. <laughs> Doing streaming for his barbecue, so we'll be busy. It's I'm gonna, gonna sleep in his whisper room. I think it's probably the only <laughs> the only gonna, space left in st- there. Sleep on a diagonal like that? Yeah, probably. <laughs> he has a great collection of memorabilia from oh, from the you know, the time when you know he and I were kids. You know, stuff TV shows that you wouldn't even know about. It like, is a nostalgia like supercar festival. and 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 Fireball XL5 and Caitlin Radio. And Caitlin then there's Bakelite the radio. Pez, the Pez, the Pez collection in yeah, the bathroom. It's, so it's that's why we're, we're going all the way across the country just to see that. <laughs> no, because that's a lot of voiceover do. friends that, and colleagues. Exactly. So we won't be here next week, but you can watch any any episode of this show. They're all on YouTube. They're all on our website. Just go look at past episodes. Maybe there's somebody you really want to see, like Carlo. You know, aside from Melissa, yeah, we got be, Carlos Alas Rocky mm-hmm. and some and. and and we and we had uh, uh, Bill Ratner on last week. If yeah, you missed Bob that Bergen. one, Bob Bergen, all these yeah. great talents who come on the show, and uh, you can watch those interviews too, along with all the tech tips. And we're going to course yeah. have more tech tip uh, videos going out on our YouTube channel as well. Uh, however, in two weeks, we've got Duran Gleaves from Adobe Audition. Yep, one right. of the developers there. You know, he's a guy you run into at the trade shows and stuff like that. And yep. say, hey. There's a glitch. Well, let me see if I can re- if I can recreate that. He does a lot of training too. I mean, that's yeah. where I've seen him. I've seen him at seen him at Nam a couple of times, and we've tried to get him on for a while. Finally, got him. We're really excited. To uh, that'll have be that. great. So it'll be a geeky evening, but it'll also be important because some of the stuff in Adobe Audition translates to other software. This would be as an well. amazing time if you if you are an Audition user to be here live so you can have that interaction with him and ask your questions. That would right. be yeah. very good. On the 29th of October, mm-hmm. it's just rolling through. It'll be Christmas before you know. Yeah. Uh, Jonathan Tilly will be our guest. We're, we're going to record an interview with him. He's an expert on marketing, massive marketing. That's, that's what he does. He's yeah. really good at it. Yeah. Uh, and he's in town, so we'll get uh, an interview with him. On November 5th, and I know you're so looking forward to this. This is going to be a blast, really, we're, actually. We ha- we're going to do, we're going to stream a live concert here on our show uh, with Sally Canto, which is Brian and Rosie Amador yeah, and their not, daughter Alyssa. So, it's not our usual format. We're just, no, it's just going to be a it's show. It's going to be a party. It's going to be Music. a backyard concert, and we're going to just stream it live. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and I hear that I may actually be singing. <laughs> is that right? Yes. Your house, your mic, your rules. That's right. <laughs> Apparently. As, as will the missus, who will also, oh, cool. who, who sings a lot better she's than I She's actually a pretty good singer. She's actually at a choir rehearsal she's, right she, now. So she's quite good. That would explain why, you know, so we're going to have some fun with that. So if you want to see that, we'll be, you know, 
we'll have more information on how Are you, you can convince attend. her to drag her piano outside. No, no, we'll, we'll be, we're, it'll be an appearance of the Yuka Leonard's. Yeah, the Yuka we'll, Leonard's. We'll, we'll get our, our ukuleles out. There. Nice. Uh, who are our donors of the week? Well, we got a lot of familiar names in here because a lot of these folks subscribe on uh, using PayPal. We've got Tracy H. Reynolds. Uh, let's hit the J key because that should show me more donations. Well, there you go. And moving down the list here. I've got a nice one from Stanley Allen. That's, Thanks, Stanley. Is that a new Very name? generous of you. New name to you? It is a new, new name. New name to me. Thanks, Stanley. Really cool. Um, Andrew Kaufman, one of the subscribers. We've got uh, Eric Aragoni, who's been just an every single week donor for a, quite a few years now. Uh, Larry Hudson last week gave us a nice donation. Thanks, Thank you, Larry. Professor Hudson. Yeah, oh, great guy. So nice batch of donations. And if you want to donate it, even a buck, if we heard something tonight that benefited you, you can do that on the website, on the subscribe button or the donate button, I should say. You can subscribe at that point if you want. You don't have to. You can just make a one-time donation, whatever feels good to you. It helps. And it keeps the show looking as clean and pristine and colorful and live as it is. And completely transparent, just the way you like it. Oh, look at that. Fascinating. <laughs> Uh, one of the other things, and you remind people on Twitter all the time, is to join our mailing list. We're up to 520 people on our mailing list. It's been growing amazingly. It's so funny, but mailing lists, as retro as they sound, you know, this whole email mailing Gotta list Gotta be thing, there. It's, it's really becoming really more valuable. And mm -hmm. I, myself, am paying more attention to newsletters than I used to. And I think it's just because there's so much noise coming from social media, you know, so we need a new way to, to connect. So, yeah, we are using that to let you know what's going on. Yeah, so make sure you check it out because I think on our website there's a little tab you can join the mailing list sure. from there. Yeah. So, and that'll help you get updates on the show and let you'll know who's being on before everybody I'm sure else. we'll let everybody know how to be at that show if they want to be at the concert. Absolutely. Right? If you happen to be in the greater Los Angeles area. Mm -hmm. Uh, if you want to work with George and have your studio professionally tuned, created, designed, where do they go? They go to George the dot tech. That's all you got to know. Dan, you go over to home voiceover studio.com and that's where you'll find me. I hang out there. I like live in a little corner <laughs> of the website. All righty. Let's see here. You We've got. That? What? Oh, I'm sorry. I stepped on you. Oh, oh well, ow. <laughs> I've already done say? the uh, webinar. That's dead and gone, so yeah. I can delete that from the queue of things to talk about. My Instagram, George the Tech, at George the Tech Instagram. Uh, my podcast, The Pro Audio Suite. As I mentioned, we get to geek out. Last episode we just posted was about plugins. And Oh, that uh, must have been really geeky. Oh, <laughs> we had a good old time. Well, it's you know we get to actually speak to two competitive competing companies. Uh -huh. I mean, Waves and Isotope were really two of the big competitors, and they were both there uh, complimenting each other. Well, I was going to say, are they we arguing? Tried, yeah, we tried. your thing doesn't do nothing. They were way too professional to get into a fight on the air, but we tried. <laughs> <laughs> um, by the way, you could be in our audience. Yes. And we have people in the audience tonight. Do we have the audience cam working? No, the audience cam is not working. <laughs> <laughs> What? Yeah. No, there it is. There well, can, still. There's a still <laughs> in the Close audience. At least well, everybody's they, smiling. Yeah, they, they look totally excited <laughs> to be here. <laughs> if you would like to be in a still photo of our audience, we just put up cardboard cutouts there. <laughs> you can join us by uh, writing to us if you're in the greater Los Angeles area on a Monday night. You know you're going to be here. Or you live in Encino or Tarzana or Studio City or one of those places. Uh, you can write to us at theguys at vobs.tv. And we will give you the secret handshake and let you in here. We'll set a chair out for you. There we go. Um, let's see. We're here every Monday night, except next Monday night, at uh, 6 p.m. Pacific Time, 9 p.m. Uh, in the East Coast areas. Yeah, if you're listening as a podcast, join us live so you can be interactive and Ask questions of our guests sometime. That's right. Like our audience did tonight. Uh, the show logs, the show logs are just there now. Mm -hmm. Is it YouTube just? Apparently puts... YouTube's doing these things. I, I haven't taken a look to see how you see them yet, but uh, They're apparently there. you click on the right thing and there's, what's that? There's another preview. 
They've been doing it for oh, years, years, but now it now it's okay. all of a sudden come to our attention apparently that that they're there. Right. Actually, I think it's Jack just is like, really? I've been doing this by hand all this time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's the kind of guy Jack is, anyway. Yeah. Uh, okay, we need to thank our sponsors, of course. Uh, Harlan Hogan's Voiceover Essentials. Yeah, voiceover Extra. Source Elements. Vo to go go. VoiceActorWebsites.com. And J. Michael Collins Demos. All righty. We also need to thank, of course, the Dan and Marcy Leonard Foundation for the betterment of live webcasting. Our producer, Catherine Curridan, for getting us great guests like Melissa Motes. And all this great lineup of guests we got coming up over the next couple of weeks. Keeping it flowing. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And uh, Jack Daniel on chat room duty tonight. Yes, Yay. you may applaud. <laughs> Just to boost his ego a little bit. Um, also, and he also helps us out with our YouTube stuff. Which yes, is, he does. Uh, which is a big help. Yes. Uh, and, of course, our technical director extraordinaire who gets it done, Sue Merlino. Once again, thank you for the work she does. And, of course, Lee Penny for being Lee Penny. Uh, Well, that's going to do it for us this week uh, and for next week, too. But uh, we look forward to seeing all you guys at Uncle Roy's uh, Barbecue next week. And we'll be back in two weeks. We know it's a tough business. you got to have the right information. And we're here to help you with your sound. Because if it sounds right, or if it sounds good, it's right right. and good. It's right and good. I'll figure it out one of these days. That's going to do it for us tonight. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Widow. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or VO. BS. Have a great week, everybody.